I'm Indy Mizell, Global Public Relations Director with IJM today, talking with Alice Segunya from IJM's Chennai office. Alice, thanks so much for joining us over Skype today. We're curious to know about this latest rescue operation. I understand it was the second largest rescue operation to date that IGM has conducted, and you actually got to be on the ground participating in this rescue. Just tell us about it. Basically, it all started because of a distress call that a government official received. And then tracing the signal, he was able to locate the brick factory where the laborers were trapped. As soon as he entered, he saw hundreds of people running towards him asking for help. Can you talk to us a little bit about what their lives were like on a regular basis while they were enslaved in this brick factory? Basically, the living conditions are very bad. They are made to work throughout the night sometimes. Um, the children are forced to work. They don't have the freedom to play. And we heard that uh, they have to work close to, you know, ranging from 14 hours to 22 hours in a day. So they hardly get to sleep. What was the most difficult part for you on this rescue operation? What is very difficult and very challenging to see and observe is the complete lack of uh, uh, accountability on, on the part of the owner for the crime committed, the offense committed by the person. Because we see that there is no remorse. I know you have been assisting International Justice Mission for 11 years now on rescue operations. How does this one compare and what was going through your mind uh, when you saw that there were hundreds of people inside that building? This case personally is a unique one for me. Generally we initiate cases, but this was completely and fully initiated by the government officials. I know about 10 years ago this would have been unheard of to have uh, the government officials uh, respond so uh, quickly. In fact, uh, many didn't even believe that slavery exists in the country. Uh, and right now we uh, know the latest estimates are more than 36 million people around the world are, are considered slaves right now. Uh, congratulations, you must be extremely proud knowing that IJM helped train many of these government officials to, to bring them to this level of being able to respond uh, in this type of capacity and so quickly. Uh, you know, moving forward, I know many people want to know what is going to happen to, to these families who were rescued. Uh, where are they now and, and what's their, what are their next steps? So all the families that were rescued on that day have been, have now safely reached their homes. They have all uh, uh, received their release certificates, which is a legal document that, uh, that uh, entitles them for rehabilitation money under the Bonded Labor Abolition Act. At IGM, we are also doing a comprehensive two-year aftercare program. All the children will be uh, put back in school and they will pursue their education. Um, and not only that, uh, we will be identifying uh, you know, any skills that are there in, within uh, this group of rescued laborers and we will be able to provide additional training like vocational trainings so that they can they can find their own employment in their own state. They have the freedom to dream for their family. They have the freedom to think or, and plan what do they want to do with their lives in the coming years. And lastly, what would you like people to know about slavery, uh, especially in India? This is a problem that is invisible, but over the years, because of our work and because of the constant uh, uh, work that we have done here, the problem has come to light. Al Sagunya with IJM Chennai, thanks so much for joining us and we wish you all the best as you continue to do more rescue operations with IJM. For those who want to learn more about our work, we ask you to go to our website, it's IJM.org.